So it usually doesn't take very long between when someone sets up specular reflections in their 3D lighting system and when they start to wonder what it might be like if they were to instead of define a specular intensity for the entire material, if they were to instead sample that specular intensity from a texture map, the way that you might do with a diffuse or a normal map or something else. And as it turns out, specular mapping is another fairly common part of 3D lighting materials. And specular mapping is going to be the subject of today's video. This is probably going to be the last time I make a video that's just about specularity. Um, this shouldn't take too long, so let's do this. By the way, uh, before I actually do that, there is one fairly small but fairly um, noticeable in some circumstances errors that I made in the, uh, in the first two videos, um, where I have the uh, final color calculated. Instead of multiplying the diffuse color by ambient plus diffuse plus specular, um, we're going to want to uh, to move this one this more this one closed parentheses over one term. Uh, we're going to want to multiply the diffuse color by ambient plus diffuse, and then add the specular term onto the end of that. Um, I should have added a pinned comment to those previous two videos about that because I think I did it in both of them. Um, if I didn't, someone remind me, and I'll go do that. Uh, that's a uh, that's an easy thing to overlook in the code, but it can be fairly noticeable in, um, like in the actual 3D scenes. Um, it's, uh, it basically will make the, uh, the specular reflections on dark surfaces, you know, darker because instead of uh, adding light to the, uh, to the diffuse color, you're just basically, um, basically just adding a little bit of extra light to the N.L term. And you can see now that I fixed that, we've got a little bit of an actual actual brightness on the, uh, like the dark part, the ocean part of this, uh, this texture map of the earth that I've got going here. Whereas before we didn't really have that because this, um, the blue of the ocean was already pretty dark and a dark color multiplied by the, the specular reflection is going to be, uh, still pretty dark. All right. Anyway, once again, we don't really have to make that many changes here. Um, I'm going to, uh, let me see. Um, I think I'm actually going to draw all three of these spheres with the earth texture, uh, now that I think about it. And actually, I'll, uh, I'll leave the last one alone. I'll do the first two with the earth texture. Uh, this is a texture map of the planet Earth. Uh, if you're interested in things like this, I believe NASA has image maps for all, uh, eight plus... All eight planets plus, like, a bunch of the moons of the solar system. They might have Pluto, too, I don't remember. NASA's got a, a massive, like... Uh, public domain CC0 um, asset library if you're if you're interested in that sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to make a few small changes to the shader to uh, to get specular mapping working um, in this uh, in the shader. So let's start by saying uniform sampler 2D. I'm going to call this samp underscore specular. So this is going to be our specular texture map. Um, I'm going to, instead of defining float specular strength equals 0.5 down here, or instead of setting that to like a material property as a uniform float or something, I'm going to say float specular strength is going to be equal to texture 2D, and I'm going to sample from stamp underscore specular at our texture coordinate, V underscore V text chord, and this is going to return a vector 4. Uh, specular textures generally... Uh, they will generally be grayscale images. I believe specular color is also sometimes done as a uh, texture sampler in a specular mapping material system, but um, I'm just going to be going with specular intensity for now. You should be able to fill in the gaps on your own. Hey. I'm going to be using this as the uh, specular map for planet Earth. Uh, I've also got uh, a texture map of the planet Mercury, as I mentioned, and I'm just going to use this as like a, a bit of a roughness um, texture for uh, one of the other globes. Uh, that's another thing, by the way, if you're familiar with PBR, physically based rendering, specular maps and roughness maps are basically the same thing, except the, uh, the roughness map defines the opposite of a specular map. So, um, basically one minus the specular, um, the specular strength. Uh, they're very similar overall. Someday I'll make videos on PBR and Game Maker, but first I want to finish the, uh, the basic stuff. And I've also just got a, uh, a checkerboard pattern, and I'm going to be using this as, um, another uh, miscellaneous uh, specular texture, which we'll be playing with later. Right. Anyway, this is going to return a, um, a red, green, blue alpha value, which is going to be basically a grayscale image. Uh, I just care about uh, one component of that grayscale. I just want a single float so you can say that dot red. Uh, red, green, and blue should be all about the same. And 
I don't think I have to change anything else in the shader because after this, after we have this value, we can just plug it into the existing, um, uh, the existing uh, calculation for specular color. And now all I have to do is actually set up the, um, set up the, uh, the specular texture for the, uh, the GML side. So I can do that with our old friend texture set stage. Uh, the stage can be shader get sampler index. You're probably all getting bored of hearing me say, um, these function names, uh, what is it? Shader basic 3D stuff. It's not really basic 3D stuff anymore, but samp specular. Um, and the, uh, I need the texture ID, don't I? So that's gonna be sprite get texture. Uh, let's go with the uh, specular texture for the earth first, the number zero. Uh, I also said I would do some other, um, some other specular textures just so that we can see what they look like. So let's drop in on the second planet Earth. And that's an interesting phrase out of context. Uh, let's drop the, the, uh, the checker pattern on the second planet Earth. And on the last one, um, I think I'm going to apply the uh, the mercury uh, texture as our specular texture, so just the, uh, the plain white globe. And I think I'll also have like a control, like a control group. Um, so I can draw off to the side a, a fourth ball with no texture, and I'm going to set the specular texture to negative one, just um, just so that we can see what it's like if it's like a plain white texture with a, you know, a specular strength of one, and no roughness to speak of. So let's um, let's run this now. And if I come over here and look at the globes, we should see that everything looks um, everything looks a certain way. So we can see the checker the checker pattern on the uh, the the uh, globe in the middle. So this is the uh, checker specular map, and we can see that the uh, specular highlight is shining through on, um, you know, the the light parts of the checker, and not on the dark parts. Uh, over here, this first one, I specifically did um, kind of paint in this specular texture so that we've got the reflections happening on the uh, the water parts of the um, of the globe because you might expect water to be a little bit more shiny than like um, land very rocky, very rough land. And we can see that indeed on like North America, on Asia, on um, North Africa over here, we don't really have any specular highlight um, shining on this, um, um, shining back at us, but on the uh, the Atlantic, on the Pacific Ocean, we do. Um, and that's, uh, that's a bit of an example of what you can use a specular map for if you have part of a 3D texture, which is supposed to be um, more or less, uh, let's say shiny than other parts, uh, you might use a specular map to control that. And coming back over here, uh, we can see that uh, the planet Mercury doesn't really make that many adjustments to this uh, this white sphere as its uh, specular map, but it does create a bit of a, maybe a dusty rough pattern. Whereas over here in the, uh, what I call the control sphere, um, it's a lot more even. And we've got the uh, the shiny spot being a lot more, uh, a lot more even. And over here, it's broken up a little bit by the, um, like the roughness of the planet Mercury, by the, the craters on the surface. And um, that's another example of things that you can do with a specular map if you're, uh, if you're interested in that. If you're using this for like ground or something, or um, maybe uh, like shiny tiles that are a little bit, um, a little bit dusty, haven't been cleaned in a while, or uh, like cobblestones that are getting a little bit old. You can use uh, something like that as your specular texture. All right, that's really it. Uh, there isn't a lot to this. Once you know how specular and um, Fong and Blin Fong lighting models work, you uh, it's really not a great leap to uh, set this to a texture map. I think uh, getting a normal map going was uh, quite a bit more work. The effect you can create with these things is rather cool. That's it. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post about two game dev videos a week. Uh, one tutorial tutorial like this and one let's make a game. Currently a uh, 3D Zelda like wizard game. So if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Manta Ray, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Vitro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.